So I already gave a monster goodbye sermon like a month ago. Um, I have been on the Bema since then. I've been in my office since then. I have answered my emails since then. Um, and uh, as many of you know, in the summer, my heart is often drawn uh, to the true word that defines Dresha, which is a story. Um, for many summers growing up, I spent my summers at Jewish summer camp. So did my brother. So did my parents. And central to this experience, and truly one of the, the reasons I became a rabbi was because of these bonfires that would happen on Friday nights. It was a reformed Jewish summer camp. It was originally a communist Jewish summer camp. So. <laughs> Um, and around these fires, we would sing, and the camp director, who was also a rabbi, would walk around the fire and tell a magical story. And so many of the stories that I've told all of you are either exact replications or kernels that I have since sort of worked um, from these stories that I heard as a child around that campfire. And now my father is the rabbi who walks around that campfire and tells the stories. He's not the camp director, but I, I think you're the oldest human on camp now. Yep. <laughs> um, and this community knows my love of stories and how every summer I always make sure to tell a story. And I found the perfect story for tonight. So I wanted to share it with you and I think maybe it's one that my father hasn't heard me tell yet. <laughs> Once upon a time, a long time ago, across the oceans and across the centuries, a king ruled in Israel whose name was Solomon, and he was the heir to King David. Solomon was considered the wisest person to have ever lived in Jewish tradition. He was kind and thoughtful, and from all over the world, people would travel to Jerusalem to hear his sage advice. In their gratitude, they would repay King Solomon with treasures from all around the world, from wherever they came and whatever they thought would be the right gift for the wisest person the world had ever known. King Solomon's kitchen held every delicious and exotic spice from every cuisine of cooking. His gardens bloomed with every scent of flower, every type of towering tree. His library held every book and scroll and story. His treasury held within it every precious jewel. His walls were hung with works of art from the greatest of the age, and there was nothing on earth that King Solomon had not seen. There was no question that he could not answer. But one day... King Solomon had a visitor from a great African nation. This was the Queen of Sheba. And the borders of her land stretched from what is now Yemen to Ethiopia. It was not an easy thing to be a queen in those days, as you can probably imagine. And the Queen of Sheba was known throughout the world for her courageous heart and her clever mind. The queen was famous for her own impossible, unsolvable, creative riddles. And so it was no surprise that when she arrived at King Solomon's palace with a parade unlike any Jerusalem had ever seen, that she came with a challenge in mind. You, King Solomon, the Queen of Sheba said, are supposed to be the most brilliant person who ever was or ever will be. And if you are so wise, I have a riddle for you that I can't answer. I can't sleep at night. This riddle haunts my dreams. I pace the floor driven mad with my frustration. It feels like my world is broken. I've never heard a riddle I couldn't answer, and I must know. Can you help me, King Solomon? And King Solomon was intrigued by this mystery. An impossible riddle that even the queen of Sheba, who loved riddles, couldn't answer? He had to know. And so the queen told this riddle. If a happy person looks at it, they become sad. And if a sad person looks at it, 
they become happy. What is it? The king had no idea. So he did what he always did whenever an answer eluded him. He set out to learn, and he scoured every book in his great library until he found one single clue. Then the king called upon his best friend, Benaya Mibet Yehoyada, his most trusted advisor. And he said to them, Benaya, there is a certain ring I want you to find and bring to me. If it exists anywhere on earth, your majesty replied, Benaya, I will find it. I will bring it to you. But what makes this ring so special? It's a magical ring, answered the king. If a happy person looks at this ring, they become sad. And if a sad person looks at this ring, they become happy. Will you find this ring and bring it back to me? Benaya couldn't imagine that there was a ring that existed in the world, but they wanted only to gladden the heart of their best friend, the king. So they began their search. Spring passed, and then summer passed, and still Benaya had no idea where to find the ring. They were about to give up when they decided to go to a very unlikely place, their own backyard. There was a flea market just outside the palace in the old city of Jerusalem, and there, Benaiah passed an elderly merchant who had begun to set out the day's wares on a shabby, threadbare carpet. You look so sad, the old woman said. Have a cup of tea. Tell me, what troubles you? I have a riddle to which I don't know the answer. I can't sleep at night. This riddle haunts my dreams. I pace the floor, driven mad with frustration. It feels like my world is broken. I've never heard a riddle that I couldn't answer, and I must know. Can you help me? Have you by chance heard of a magical ring that makes the happy wearer forget their joy and the broken-hearted wearer forget their sorrow? Asked Benaiah. The old woman's wrinkled face broke into a smile. Benaiah watched as she took a plain gold ring from her carpet and engraved something too small for them to see inside. But when they brought the ring close and looked carefully and read the words, Benaiah's face broke into a wide smile, and they hurried back to the palace where King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba had been eagerly awaiting their return. Well, my friend, said King Solomon, have you found what I sent you after? To everyone's surprise, Benaiah held up a plain gold ring and declared, here it is, your majesty. And the king and queen of Sheba bent their heads together to read the inscription, and wide smiles stretched across their faces. The old merchant had written three Hebrew words on the simple gold band. Gam ze ya'avor. This too will pass. And the king and queen understood. If someone were to look at this ring in the moment of their greatest happiness, they would become sad because they would be reminded that nothing, no moment lasts forever, not even the happy ones. And if a person who was living through the worst moment of their lives looked at it, they might find some comfort because nothing, no moment lasts forever, not even the sad ones. Everything has a time and a season, and then the next season arrives, and this is both life's greatest happiness and its greatest sadness. And so this is the story that I wanted to tell you tonight with an immense amount of happiness and of sadness, because this moment, which has stretched into six magical years, has contained both the happy and the sad. And while I wish that many moments lasted forever, none of them do. And I'm really, really grateful that I got to spend it with you. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>